Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. So the topic for today is curve sketching for F and F prime. So let's begin. First, we recall the properties of the different asymptotes. So we will have a vertical asymptote on F of X if at least one of the following is true. So the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the left is positive or negative infinity, or the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right is positive or negative infinity. So here's an example. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1 here. And as you approach it from the left, it goes to negative infinity. And as you approach it from the right, it goes to positive infinity. So for horizontal asymptotes of the line y equals b, we need one of the following, at least one of the following to be true to have a horizontal asymptote um, in the graph of f equals f of x. <coughs> so the limit as f of, the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity is equal to b, or the limit of f of x as x, x approaches to positive infinity is equal to b. So here is what it would look like. So here is a function with the horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 2. So as you approach negative infinity, we will slowly uh, approach b, which is negative 2. And as we approach infinity, we are also slowly approaching negative 2. So the next are oblique asymptotes. So they're usually of the form y equals mx plus b, where m is not equal to zero. Um, because if m equals zero, it will no longer be an oblique asymptote, but a horizontal asymptote since it's of the line y equals b. So m must not be equal to zero. And so in order to have a oblique asymptote, at least one of the follow in the graph of f of x, at least one of the following is true. So the limit of f of x minus mx plus b as x approaches negative infinity is equal to zero, or the limit of f of x minus mx plus b as x approaches positive infinity is equal to zero. So here's an example of an oblique asymptote at y equals 0 0.5x minus 1. So here you can see the line, the oblique asymptote, and the function here approaches it as it approaches negative infinity and it approaches the line as well as it approaches positive infinity. So with that, let us recall the step-by-step -step procedure on how to graph a function. So first step, we need to find the domains and intercept. And the next step, we need to identify the vertical, horizontal, and oblique asymptotes. Next, we need to find all the critical points and possible point of inflection of f of x. Next, we need to make a table of signs of f prime and f double prime. Identify which intervals in the function can gives up and up or down, which is given by the table of signs of f double prime. Identify which intervals of the function is increasing or decreasing, which is given by the table of signs of f prime. Identify at what points uh, are the relative minimum, relative maximum, and possible and points of inflection occur. So we will also be able to observe that in the table of signs. 
Next, we need to plot and label important points. So the important points are the intercepts, holes, extremas, and points of inflection. And lastly, we use the table to graph the rest of the function. So let's have an example. So we need to sketch the graph of f of x where f of x is equal to 1 minus x squared all over x minus 2 to be squared, which is equal to 1 minus x times 1 plus x all over x minus 2 to be squared with f prime of x or the derivative of f of x to be equal to 4x minus 2 all over x minus 2 cubed and f double prime as equal that <laughs> that would be equal to um, negative 8x plus 2 all over x minus 2 to the fourth. So the first thing we need to notice here is that the domain of f is the list is all real numbers except 2 since the denominator here x minus 2 to be squared it is undefined at x equals 2. So the first step we need to solve for the x and y intercepts. So let us start with the x intercept let y be equal to 0. So 1 minus x times 1 plus x all over x minus 2 to be squared is equal to 0. Multiply both sides by x minus 2 to be squared. We are left with 1 minus x times 1 plus x equals 0. Or x is equal to plus minus 1. So for the y-intercept, let x be equal to 0. So substituting the values, we have 1 minus 0 all over negative 2 to be squared. Or y equals 1 fourth. So f has x-intercepts at negative 1, 0, and 1, 0, and a y-intercept at 0, 1, 4. So next, we need to determine all the asymptotes of the graph f of x. So we begin with the vertical asymptotes. Note that f is, uh, the function f is undefined at x equals 2. So x equals 2 is a candidate for the vertical asymptote. So we begin by looking at the limit of f of x at as x approaches 2 from the left. So limit of f of x is as x approaches 2 from the left is equal to this. So it will become negative 3 all over 0 to the right, which is basically saying that the limit is equal to uh, negative infinity. Now, we also need to check the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from the right. But since it already satisfies uh, the one from the left, we already know that it's a vertical asymptote. But still, we need to check as x approaches negative as x approaches 2 from the right. So solving this, we will get negative 3 all over 0 to the right. So that is also negative infinity. So since the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from the left is equal to negative infinity, and limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from the right is also negative infinity, Clearly, we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. So the next thing we need to check are the horizontal asymptotes. So we compute the limits at positive and negative infinity. So limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity is equal to limit as 1 minus x squared all over x squared minus 4 x plus 4 as x approaches negative infinity. So multiplying the entire equation by 1 over x squared, we will get 1 over x squared minus 1 all over 1 minus 4x plus 4x squared. So limit as x approaches negative infinity, we are left with 0 minus 1 all over 1 minus 0 minus 0, or simply negative 1. So the limit 
uh, of f of x as x approaches positive infinity now. So this is a fairly similar with uh, the negative infinity case. So we multiply the entire equation by 1 over x squared. And we will get 1 over x squared minus 1 all over 1 minus 4x plus 4x squared all over, four all over x squared. And limit as x approaches positive infinity, we are left with 0 minus 1 all over 1 minus 0 minus 0, or simply negative 1. So clearly, we will have a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 1, since the limit of f of x at x approaches negative infinity is negative 1, and the limit of f of x as x approaches positive infinity is equal to negative 1. So since we already have a horizontal asymptote, we no longer have to check if f as a oblique asymptote, because since we have a horizontal asymptote, we are sure that it has no oblique asymptotes. So the next step, we need to find all the critical points and possible points of inflection of f. So we note that f prime of x is equal to 0 when x is equal to 1 half, and x, f prime of x does not exist when x equals 2. So the critical numbers of f prime is r x is equal to one half and two. And furthermore, f double prime is equal to zero when x equals negative one fourth. And f double prime x does not exist when x equals two. So x minus equals one negative one fourth and two are also possible points of inflection. However, since we know from earlier that x minus 2 is not in the domain, then we are also sure that x equals 2 is neither a critical number nor a possible point of inflection since it is not part of the domain. So next step, we need to construct a table of signs of for f and f prime. So here is the table of signs. So we are not going to check individually um, the different, I am not going to show you how we solve for each of this um, range since it will be very time consuming, but I will just teach you how to um, analyze the results. So here we have f prime is positive and f double prime is positive. So f prime indicates whether the function is increasing or decreasing. Since it's positive, it is here, increasing. And f double prime indicates the concavity. So since it is positive, then it is increasing and concave up. At negative one fourth, f prime is positive. However, f double prime is zero. This means that at negative one fourth, it is a point of inflection. From negative one part to one half, f prime is positive, while f double prime is negative. So f prime indicates whether it is increasing or decreasing. Since it's positive, it is increasing, and f double prime is negative. So it is increasing while the concavity is downward. At one half, f prime is zero and f double prime is negative. This means that at one half, we have a relative maximum since f prime is zero and f double prime is negative. From one half to two, f prime is negative while f double prime is also negative, which means that it is decreasing and concave down while at x equals 2, uh, it is not part of the domain, so both functions do not exist. Thus, it is a vertical asymptote, as we uh, solved earlier. So from 2 to positive infinity, we have f prime is positive, while f double prime is negative. So it is increasing with it while its concavity is downward. Now, with all that, we are now prepared to sketch the graph of so 
you need to take note of some of the important points. So these are the x-intercepts, y-intercepts, point of inflection, relative maximum, the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So first we draw the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Next we um, label and draw the points, the different important points, the x-intercept, y-intercept, points of inflection, and relative maximum. Then we begin. So um, from the table of signs earlier, we, say, we stated that from negative infinity to negative one-fourth, it is increasing and concave up. So we are going upwards, and the concavity is upwards as well. So from negative one fourth to one half, it is increasing still. However, its concavity is downward, so still increasing. However, its concavity is downward. So it's not that clear here, but the concavity is downward. So from negative, sorry, my bad, from one half Two, we know that it is decreasing and concave down. So it is now going downwards since it is decreasing and the concavity is downwards as well. And lastly, at from two to positive infinity, it is increasing while its concavity is downwards. So uh, this graph is slightly modified to emphasize the asymptotes and the points in the interval to, to positive infinity. So with that, we are able to graph the function. So this is the graph for f of x. Hopefully you have you now have a better idea on how to graph f of x. So hopefully you learned something today and that is all for this video. Thank you for listening.